Praise God. My name is Masikura. This morning I'm saved. I love my God for being my Ebenezer. I want to thank the leadership of this church for giving this another chance to share the word of God. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, we want to thank you this morning, Jehovah God, for the Father you have taken us. We thank you, mighty Father, even for the word. We ask you, Jehovah God, that you may be with us. O oh, Jehovah, as we listen, may you speak to us with the language we can understand. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and believe. Amen. Today, I want us to share the word of God. And our theme is Holy Spirit, the Enabra. Holy Spirit, the Enabra. My topic this morning is crossing our Jordan. Crossing our Jordan. Uh, we are going to read from the book of Joshua, from chapter 3, chapter 3, from verse 1 up to 14. And uh, for the interest of time, we are going to go through it as we peruse through the scripture. So if we can remember very well, this was the time that Joshua had sent the two spies who had gone to see the promised land and they were helped by one lady called Rahab. And they brought back the news, the good news that they brought to General Joshua that God has given us the land. And everyone in that place is really panicking about us. Remember, God had done so much and so many miracles in the wilderness, and the news had reached those people. So when they heard about the Israelite coming, they were really panicking about them. And they brought, the news brought joy as they said the words of Joshua. The Lord has handed over the entire land to us and everyone in that land is panicking. Good news for Joshua at that particular time. And in the verse 1, he actually sent the first runners throughout to tell the Israelite to start packing or decamp because they were about to leave that side and proceed to the banks of River Jordan. And that is exactly what they did. In the morning, they would break the camp and pitch their tents on the banks of, the banks of River Jordan. And we can see how happy they were, seeing that uh, the promised land was just about an eye drop, or they were just about to get to the promised land. And I'm sure they packed happily as they moved from the groove Acacia towards the banks of River Jordan. And the smooth ground that was there towards the River Jordan, they were all happy. And you can imagine how many they were, hundreds of thousands. They moved toward the river bank, and they were very happy to see their promised land. But they approached the journey from there just a few miles and they were able to see the brink of their dream. But as they approached the famous liver that formed a barrier between their promised land and their long awaited real estate, you can imagine the dream, eh? the land of milk and honey, where they wanted to settle, where God had promised them for many years. When they arrived there, what, really, what they saw by the light of day was both confusing and dreadful. The Jordan was defiantly uncrossable. The water had raised its volume. The, it was raging and it had swelled its banks. The, the, the banks had swelled in such a way that the floods would have moved the way we can compare with the Budarangi people. It had moved like three miles to the underground and maybe three feet to ten feet depth. And it was roaring, you can imagine, fast moving water and the volume, you would not even dare. They stopped there and they were like, ah, how are we going to get over there? How are we going to cross? They were just asking themselves very many questions. The Bible tells us that they spent the next three days right there. The passing torrent of eroding uh, currents really made their confidence to go. 
looking at that river, even yourself, you cannot dare. They were there whispering. Only the strong and the brave can dare the flood. But as us, the aged, the sickly, the infants, some were born that morning, and of course their possession they had carried. You can imagine if they are uh, the Israelites of today, if we are like the, the famous Kenyans, you would find people from Western carrying eh, all their chickens, all their mattresses, eh? and people from Central, maybe they would have carried all their share certificates and the title deeds. They were wondering how they would cross that river. And of course, they just stood there. Maybe if we cross, we drown. And that is the end of us. If we go back, definitely going back to that uh, desert for all those years they had spent would have made them lose the promised land. So it was not easy for them. And the waiting powdered reality into every Israelite. You would hear them whisper in road tones. Some had lost hope. Some could only sit and wait. Others, you remember even when they were crossing the Red Sea, were complaining. Definitely the complaining did not end. They had to complain, why all this far? And then we are not able to cross. So it is easy for us to relate to the many, to the emotions and thoughts of Israel. So many of us face, face personal Jordan that feels so permanent and powerful that we don't even try to make it across. Our lives fell stalled, stuck on the wrong side of God's promise. You may find yourself on the wrong side of God's promise. Just a mile and you are not able to cross. Our life feels that we cannot even move. Churches can feel that way too. Stalemated by the promise of something great with God, but blocked by all kinds of barriers. Like now we have those barriers. So, but with God, we, God can turn a Norway into a highway. And God was about to reveal the steps that must be taken in every life, in every church, if we are to move from grounded to grateful. If we are to move from marooned in the past to the marveling of God's work. So God gave us the three steps that I want us to look today that we should actually follow step by step so that we can cross our Jordan. Number one. Follow the movement of God from verse 2 to 4. After three days, after three days they had uh, camped there. Remember after arriving they found how the France were, how the, the river was. It was enormous with the roads that you cannot imagine. So they camped there for three days. So after three days, Joshua was commanded by God. And Joshua commanded officers to go through the camp and see and command the people. If they see the Ark of Covenant of the Lord, they should decamp. Because Joshua was commanded by God that they pick the Ark of Covenant and move. And so Joshua commanded the officers to go and tell the people. You can imagine there were so many people. So Joshua had to find people who are to run around and make sure bring forth the information to the people that when they see the Ark of the Covenant, they should decamp. And that is exactly what they did. But we should ask ourselves, what is this? What is the Ark of Covenant? A piece, just a piece of furniture that God had to say, this one has to lead us. You can imagine what all, if we don't know, you should know today that what was inside the Ark of Covenant. Number one, there was the prayer of the Ten Commandments that God himself had written with his own hand, I mean his own finger. And the prayer was still there, showing that God still had the relationship with the humankind. Number two, there was a pot of manna in the same Ark of Covenant. This pot of manna was reminding the Israelites the provision that God made to them throughout the 40 years in the wilderness without food that he used to provide for them that even today he's providing for them and then there was number three the dead iron rod that rod was actually dead because when you cut uh, 
when you cut a, a piece of wood and it is the one that is reading you definitely, the wood becomes dead because it has no roots, it has no leaves. But this Lord miraculously will grow uh, leaves inside the same Ark of Covenant. If you look at the Numbers uh, chapter 17, you'll see how it was acting weirdly, growing leaves and it was already dead. And again, there was on top of the on top of the Ark of Covenant, there was a seat or a, a plate where a plate where there was a, a cherubim, cherubim, those where they believed that God sat. So the Ark of Covenant showed that God was with them. So it was to read them. Then there was another command that they should keep a distance of a thousand yards. They should not crowd the Ark of Covenant. The Ark of Covenant should lead them with a distance, social distance of today, of a thousand yards. And the, the, the elders should carry, or the priest should carry, the Ark of Covenant with the rods because it had four rods. So they had to keep, why were they keeping the distance? Because if they crowd, they will not see how the Ark of Covenant is moving. But if they keep the distance of a thousand, everyone will see where, which direction God is taking. With that kind of a distance, the hundreds of thousands of Israelites would see where the ark was moving to add. So they kept that distance and they focused on it and followed it, meaning they were following the ark of covenant. Centuries later, the ark of covenant uh, came to us as Jesus Christ, the living Emmanuel. Because the, the Jesus Christ came to fulfill the roles. And there was a pot of there was a pot of manna in the same Ark of Covenant. And we read from the Bible that Jesus is the bread of life. So you can imagine the Ark of Covenant of that time came to us as Jesus Christ today, as our Savior or God with us in Eman, as Emmanuel. So what do we do? So when we focus today, when we focus on, the, on Jesus Christ, we are read from our impossibilities to possibilities. So even today, when we are faced with impossibilities, we focus on Jesus and things become right. If they were difficult for us, we are able to move. If you remember the story of, uh, of Peter, who wanted to walk uh, on water, he asked Jesus, can I come, Master? And Jesus told him, just come. And Peter started walking, and he was focusing his eyes on Jesus. But the moment he took off his eyes from Jesus Christ I look, and looked at the raging sea, he remembered in his own mind and his own uh, heart that human beings don't walk on water. And he started sinking. The moment he removed his eyes from Jesus Christ, even us, the moment we remove our eyes from Jesus Christ, we are not able to move. We are not able to cross our Jordan. So the moment we fix our eyes on Jesus Christ, we will be able to move. That was the first step that God told the Israelites to follow. That was follow the movement of God. Then we have the step number two, consecrate ourselves. Joshua told the people to consecrate, to consecrate themselves. What is to consecrate? It, to make yourself clean, to set, to make sure that you are away from sin, you make yourself holy in order to cross the uncrossable. So how do we consecrate ourselves? By personal, first thing that you do is personal repentance of every sin. Make sure that you repent every sin. Even in Isaiah 59, uh, the Bible tells us that the God, God's heart is not short to save us, and his ears are able to hear us. But because of sin and our iniquities, he, we are not, he is not able to see us because we have blinded him with our sin. So the moment we clean ourselves and we put ourselves in order out of sin, he is able to see us. And another way of consecrating ourselves is putting ourselves on spiritual alert to see God at work. When you put yourself on spiritual alert, is you have nothing else. You are just concentrating on what God is commanding you to do, not what your body is telling you to do. 
but what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do. That is uh, the step number two. For us to be able to cross the Jordan, we must clean ourselves, keep our, ourselves away from sins by doing personal, personal repentance and putting ourselves on spiritual alert. Then step number three, step out and stand still. If you look at verse, uh, from verse 7 to 13, God told Joshua, Today I will exhort you in the sight of Israel, and they will know that I am going to use you the way I used Moses. So the one thing that they did when they started moving, the priests who were carrying the Ark of Covenant, they stepped out and moved into the Jordan River. Remember, it had not stopped. The floods were still heavy. And they believed. And they put their feet inside the river. That is stepping out. We must move forward. Whatever comes, we must move forward. So they stepped inside and put their legs inside or put their feet inside the river. And the water was still very strong. But immediately they did that the water started receding. The speed, uh, the speed like stopped. It was not very high. Maybe the speed was like in the uh, old stage of a river because a river has uh, three stages. The young stage where the, the, the speed is very high but the volume is low. But when you go to the, the, the middle stage and the lower stage, the volume is high but the speed is low. So the water somehow somehow stopped. So, uh, the step that they made is a step of faith. If you do not move and you are there saying, I receive, I reverse, and you are doing nothing to yourself, my friend, you are not going to move an inch and you will never cross your Jordan. I have said Jordans are challenges, personal challenges that we encounter in our lives. So the first step was to put the feet in the in, in Jordan River, and they were able. They were able to move their faith. So we are told that uh, the moment they did that, the water started receding, and uh, people started crossing. It receded in such a way that it stopped completely and made a highway for them. You can imagine if they were Kenyans, maybe. They would have started moving, moving, fighting, and moving in a way that they could not. So these people, they crossed. This event was registered in the minds of Israelites that a song was written about it in Psalms 114 uh, from verse 24. If you read there, you'd see the song, what they sang about the Jordan receding the water. In conclusion, brothers and sisters, it is uh, we wrong to see God do what only God can do, a Jordan before us. The challenges are too much for us. We must believe that nothing is too difficult for God. We must focus our souls on Christ and the Holy Spirit so that we can be enabled to move. The, the obstacles that hinder us are no match for our God. He can make everything possible. Even at this time that we are facing so many challenges, let us on focus on the three steps. Listen to his voice and we make that step of faith and move. And then we stand still and listen to his command. And he's going to enable us to move and cross our Jordan. Jordans are so many. We have like COVID-19 this time. It's a Jordan. We've been kept not knowing whether today is today. Everything is today. We even don't know when is tomorrow because everything looks the same. But our God is able. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, he's going to make us move forward. And we still believe in him. He can do things that are not crossable, crossable. God bless you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, we want to thank you this time, O King of Glory. We want to ask you, Jehovah God, that you make us understand the steps that you have shown us today to follow the movement of God, to consecrate ourselves and step out and stand still. And Lord Almighty, you are going to make us cross our Jordan and sing the song, Jehovah, that you are Ebenezer. In Jesus Christ we pray and believe. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet.